Welcome to this week's episode of Catching Up with Yoseka Stationery. So, so casual. casual. Ashley has returned. I'm back. And so good. You've been feeling great this week. It's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone sent so many lovely messages, so that has kept me feeling great. Yay! But, um, no, I've also just, like, I, I went to the doctor. She told me it's okay to, you know, dose up on that good old ibuprofen so we're feeling good <laughs> yeah it's always nice to get the approval from the doctor <laughs> yeah. before doing anything medical mm -hmm. <laughs> self-medicating just aggressively self-medicating yeah Bill. yeah yeah um but i'm so happy that i i think earlier this week i i always ask ashley like how are you feeling first thing in the morning and mm -hmm. i think one of these one of these times she was like good and it was just so good to hear that and that you're beginning to feel better makes me happy and i'm sure it makes a lot of viewers happy yes as well thank the universe for painkillers thank the universe for painkillers keeping me going that's the quote of the week yeah yeah i should we should start doing like a yoseko quote of, quote the, of week. the week yeah thank, thank the universe for painkillers that's this week's quote yeah um okay well i hope everyone is doing well just as Ashley is. We are excited to update everyone on our week and recently our weeks recently or days recently have been very full of event planning. Mm -hmm. um, we at Yoseka we have like a lot of events coming up over the course of the next few weeks and into even the fall and one of the events that our first event coming up is actually going to be on july 22nd to the 24th and it is our travelers travel and sketch event mm -hmm. part of the event is basically just encouraging people to get out there and travel and sketch in your traveler's notebooks and we thought it would be really cool actually our team members Bethany um, had a really cool idea to do something for these events and we've been sort of posting little teasers here and there <laughs> about it and we're really excited that this is actually Bethany's first time um, on the YouTube but we, we have her yeah. here today and she's actually going to be telling us a little bit more about the project that she's working on for Traveler Travel and Sketch. Um, so Bethany, welcome. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> Feel like a game show. Huh? Come on down to the stage. Oh, oh. Hello, hello. But Bethany is here. Um, Bethany, say hi to everyone hello, on YouTube. Everyone. Um, you have been introduced on our Instagram and you've made debuts on TikTok and I on have. Reels. Yes. Um, I sent out a newsletter with your face in it. Um, and so people are definitely getting to know you yeah. as a member of uh, Team Yoseka, but I think this is your first time saying hello on YouTube. This is the first time. <laughs> so Bethany, um, you have a super interesting creative background, right? Yes. And so it sort of relates to um, the Traveler's Travel and Sketch and watercolor specifically. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're working on for, for this event? Yeah. Uh, one of the few things that came along with the Traveler goodies was this little watercolor set, this travel size watercolor set. And it came with these empty pans. Yeah. And I had the idea of creating some custom watercolors to match our most recent ink launch of the Yoseka ceramic inks. Yeah. And um, there are just some really cool qualities to how fountain pen ink interacts with paper that you don't really see in watercolor paints. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a very cool endeav endeavor to mm -hmm. um, embark on in creating a custom watercolor collection that shares similar qualities to the fountain pen ink. Yeah, and that was actually, like when you told me about that, I thought it was super interesting. I never thought about how the color qualities, like specifically the sheening and the shading qualities of fountain pen inks are uh, sort of specific to fountain pen inks and they mm -hmm. might not translate to other uh, paints and dyes yeah. and things like that. Um, so 
it's cool that you thought of trying to replicate those effects yeah. in watercolors. Yeah, it was a um, very interesting experience watching a swatch fountain pen inks and um, just that duality mm. of, of the inks you don't really see in paints and so this was the perfect opportunity to test that out. Right, yeah. And wait, one of the interesting things that you told me was that like, like that's actually something that people don't want when they're making paints, right? Like you, that's one of the things that you told me. Yeah, it's it's not preferred because it can be very unpredictable right. when the various colors in a particular watercolor separates on the paper. Um, it becomes very hard to control when you're trying to paint a landscape, for example. Mm. So when the ink separates, not the ink, the, the paint separates unpredictably, then uh, you have a little less uh, creative license on your on your own to to layer on top of the mm, various colors. I see. But when when called upon, if an ink can be unpredictable, it can also be very serendipitous. Mm. Oh, yeah. wow. what a wonderful sentiment! That's the quote <laughs> of the week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, so that's really cool. Why don't you tell everybody like how? How do you know how to make watercolors, Bethany? Yeah, <laughs> of my myriad of um, <laughs> hobbies and passions for the creative arts, um, I used to be a watercolor maker when I was living in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, there's this beautiful custom handmade watercolor store in San Francisco called Case for Making, which is where I had taken a workshop to learn how to make watercolors and later on was um, a part-time watercolor maker so cool. that I did cool. um, outside of my regular nine to five job. And I just, I had learned so much about various pigments and how to make custom blends there. Um, when, when this project came to mind, I reached out to a couple of folks out there to help me brainstorm on different ways to create the uniqueness of of the fountain pen ink aesthetic mm. to the watercolor. And that's so nice yeah. that they like were okay with helping. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. They're very supportive. Thank you, Case, for making. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> friends, friends of friends and now friends. Um, so this past weekend actually I walked in here and Bethany was like full scientist with like <laughs> like all of these dried pigment colors yes. and like this very cool like cutting board looking thing <laughs> and this very cool like mortar and pester like uh, mortar molar, mol molar, molar looking yeah. thing and she was just like combining all these colors and this is kind of what we have so far right yes yeah so yes indeed yes i am yeah so each color is is all a custom blend so they're a mix of multiple pigments to create a very specific color to match the fountain pen inks. Uh -huh. um, and there's there's quite a bit of, of science behind this um, to, to make that perfect separation of color mm. that we're trying to mimic on watercolor paper to look like fountain pen ink on fountain pen paper. Oh, the paper right. too is yeah. another element of yeah. it. Yeah, so there, was, there were quite a few discoveries <laughs> how the fountain pen ink looks on watercolor paper versus on fountain pen paper. Mm. And um, it was very interesting to see mm. how um, the water absorbs the liquid differently. Right. And um, so that was taken into account when we were mixing these colors. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so far, Bethany has created four colors out of our eight, eight. ceramics inks. And can, is, this comes out, right? Yes. Okay. Ooh, slide it. Thank you. You like pick it out. Very Ooh. cool. Yeah. And so this one is obviously the tongue. Nisa blue. Yes. And <laughs> so cool. This one is this one is the Ching Sanhu red. Yes. Right? Yes, indeed. And which one do you have? Oh, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one is the Ching Yanzi red. Mhm. Mm I, I say that really weird. I'm very <laughs> self-conscious when I'm saying it. And this one is obviously we only have one yellow in the mm -hmm. line. It's the Ming yellow. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so that is super cool to see 
are inks and it's very easily identifiable yeah, to like see I which can is which. Them, which yeah. Is so cool. Yeah. So, Let me yes. see if I can. <laughs> Show. Bam! There we go. <laughs> They're so tiny. They're so, small. They're so yeah. tiny. But actually, like one of these uh, for anyone who watercolors, they'll last you a long time because they're yeah. super uh, concentrated yeah. forms yeah. of color. Um, so yeah, for the event, we're still trying to figure out because um, we had a lot of inquiries about how exactly we're going to be um, distributing these or like giving them out to people, um, and we're still brainstorming ways. But it will definitely be something that uh, will be available at the event in store, and we'll think of ways that uh, people will be able to get it online too. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for more information on these. Yes. But yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Bethany, for yeah. working so hard on these. Yeah. They your look knowledge, so good so far. Skills. I'm sharing excited. Skills. Everyone's sharing the enthusiasm for this. This is also a little bit of a pet project for me. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're able to like enjoy something that you used to do yeah. before and yeah. do it again at Yoseka for us. Everyone's mm -hmm. been super supportive. Yay! Okay, well. Thank you so much, yeah. Bethany, Thank you for, for having me. coming on and telling everybody about your little watercolor project, and we will be sure to have you back very soon. Sounds great. Yeah, okay. Bye, Bethany. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you later. Okay, well, that was fun. It's yeah. been a while since we had a little guest star here, and it was like we were trying to figure out how to configure our smaller space <laughs> now for three people, and it yeah. did take a few tries, but I like to think we got there. Yeah, we made it. We made it. <laughs> so what else is new this week? I guess we've just really been thinking about our upcoming events, and so May also yeah. posted a blog post. Oops. Yeah. So good. Like, I haven't, I saw her write it and so I read some of it like while it was in the making so I haven't read the final version yet but from just from the beginning it was already so good and like I love that her experience with it is so personal yeah like personalized and that she was able to you know incorporate her trip that she went on to Paris and like actually traveling and taking a traveler's notebook along mm -hmm. and sharing how she you know, draws and paints in public. Yeah, so May's perspective I thought was a really interesting one because I can certainly relate to that. Um, her blog post is all about sort of how to overcome your fear or social anxiety having to do with sketching in public. And May's actually a really good artist. She's so so good. if she has social anxiety about sketching, I mean, come on, the rest of us <laughs> definitely do. So I, I just thought it was really interesting because everybody, um, a lot, a lot of people in the community do this very regularly. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely imagine, for me, um, you know, not the best artist myself. Um, if I were to be in public and without like a notebook in your mind, you think that's something that is very attention grabbing for a lot of people. And so there's a lot of people like trying to look at what you're doing and yeah. that can be a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so May sort of lays out some simple, simple rules, just how she really streamlined her process and made uh, sketching in public um, something that she habitualized, mm -hmm. is that the word? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was really, really well written and so insightful. And I just loved looking at the pictures of her traveler's notebook and her actual sketches um, when she was in Paris and just like all of it was so great. Um, and definitely check that out for anybody who's thinking about coming to travel and sketch and having some slight fear of um, <laughs> of doing that. Um, mm -hmm. It might it might help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So aside from that, this week, we have added some new stationery, but we've been working a lot on these event things. Mm -hmm. um, but of the new stationery that we did add, we have finally, finally, the Sailor Monyo dual shading four additional new colors that were announced a while ago and people have been waiting for them and waiting for yeah. them. I had so many questions from people, when are they getting here? Are they still getting here? Mm -hmm. And they finally arrived um, and I think that they did not disappoint. They were very pretty. Yeah. Um, what else came? We have the new Browse uh, nib holders in 
Um, I guess these are like marble, marble colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, very interesting, uh, I have a little custom 912 on the table in front of me. And this week, custom, oh, Pilot actually announced that um, custom 912s would be available in the US in 15 different nib sizes. Um, so we don't have them yet, but obviously when we heard this news, we ordered them right away. And so we are very excited uh, about that. I really liked the inks, but also I'm so excited for the new nib sizes because I love all of Pilot's soft nibs, all of their like Waverly, Falcon, like just any of the like soft mediums, like yeah. because I like soft nibs in general. So I'm so excited to get to see some of those in this pen. Yeah, I'm. this is a really big announcement too. I think it's quite a big deal in the fountain pen world, especially in the, if you're in the US. We did a video all about the different nib sizes that the Custom 74 is available in. That's the Pilot number five nib, mm -hmm. as you all know. The 912 is the Pilot number 10 nib, so it's a bigger nib, and with a bigger nib, usually, you get better flow, softer flow, like softer nib, um, which just leads to a better overall writing experience. Um, and to hear that this pen is now available in all of those soft nibs, the in-between fine medium, there's the, mm -hmm. the double broad, the coarse, the mm -hmm. posting, the mm -hmm. music nib, all of those options are going to become available here. That is, um, I think people are really excited about this. And I think people are, um, the, the custom heritage is interesting because it has a flat top, mm -hmm. so it's not like the classic um, cigar-shaped customs that you often see. And I think, um, I don't know, I've spoken to quite a few people in store who prefer the flat top of the 912 over the cigar-shaped rounded tops. Really? I don't know, where do you that's land on that? I like the rounded ends, but that's just because I, I like how the custom 823 looks with them. Oh. So, like in that model, I really like it. But I feel like on this pen, it really suits it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I go both ways. It's kind of like the Sailor Pro Gear versus um, 1911 mm -hmm. debate, you know, yeah. which one you like better. But um, very excited about this news in the fountain pen world. I guess since we're on the, on the topic of things that are arriving, mm -hmm. we have some other exciting coming soon things. Yes. Yeah. So the one that will be coming soonest, I guess, <laughs> is uh, the Twisby Iris in the Diamond 580 model, uh -huh. which I am so excited for because when the Iris first came out in the VAC 700 R, I was so like, wow, this pen is like so pretty. <laughs> I remember that was when you had like just joined us. Mm -hmm. It was very close to when you first joined us yeah. and you and I were doing a demo of how to fill the VAC and um, we were like practicing before. <laughs> we were like, it better, it better fill up. Yeah, we only have one shot at this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm so excited that it's gonna be in the 580 model because I feel like sometimes that filling mechanism is a little bit more accessible to like beginners and- I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so excited for that and it's so pretty. Are you gonna get one? I thought about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm wow. Yeah, what's cool about the iris design is also that it's sort of unique because they can't uh, oxidize the, the metal in the same way across all the pens. So mm -hmm. each one that you get is a little bit different. And I think that's what, that's what a lot of people love about it too, is that there's uh, like a one of a kind element to the back iris and now the Diamond 580 iris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, so that's on the coming soon. And also on the coming soon is uh, Sailor. North America actually announced a couple of really exciting pens this past uh, week. Um, they announced Pro Gear Slims that go um, in the line, the line Friends uh, collection. So um, there's a pen that's being released that's called Brown that for anybody who uses line to chat, they have a lot of stickers or like emojis sort of, but specifically that you can use in line. Mm -hmm. So one character is called Brown and he's like a little bear. I don't know, bear a bear? I don't know. Um, um, and it's really cute. I actually, I'm a big fan of the colors of that pen. Yeah, I really like that pen color. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got a custom 
little design on the nibs, which makes it really cute as well. Yeah, and the custom finial is the mm -hmm. little bear face. So um, and it's adorable. And then there is Sally as well, who is a duck. Yeah, like a bird. A buck. A bird. Buck. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that one is like yellow and orange, um, and also custom nib and custom finial. So these are super cute, and I think a lot of people probably in North America are like, who are these? What are these? But I think a lot of our customers are actually like, yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, we've been waiting for this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, it is really cute. Um, so. I'm excited to see them in person mm -hmm. when they come, and they should be coming soon. So, next up is our customer friend of the week. Customer friend of the week! Yeah. yeah. Do you have someone? I have a couple of people. Um, our friend Natasha actually stopped by this past weekend, and um, it's just, you know, she's just one of those people, like I was just walking by and she was like, Daisy, you know, and like, you know when someone's like so happy to see you, yeah. just automatically, she has one of those like infectious, like smiles, happy personalities. Um, and when somebody has that energy, it always just like, cause I was like, I was like doing my own thing. I was like looking for a pen or something. I was looking for a pen for this customer. He had emailed me. I was just like, where's this pen? I can't find the pen. I was like in panic mode. And then Natasha was like, Daisy. And I'm like, oh my God, hi. It was so good to see you. Um, and I love Natasha because she, Ha she always comes with like she's brought so many different people to the store and she just has she has a one woman mission to convert everyone in her life into a fountain pen stationary planning person wow, nice. and you know what it's working really well I, <laughs> I hear a lot of like stories about people who try and fail because sometimes I feel like I don't know if it's not for you then maybe it's not for you but um, she has really I think she's so, she's so passionate about it herself that um, her her approach towards everything and the way she feels and her excitement about it really rubs off on other people um, and she makes a big effort because she actually like that day she came and she brought her friend Sophia who has been to the store with her before and it's like she's working on her yeah um, and it's working it's working <laughs> but then she brought her new friend Athena who is in from town out of town and Athena was like like, I don't know, she was very confused in the store. Like it was her first time like with a lot of these things, mm -hmm. but they're all gonna go um, journaling later together. Um, yeah, so I think it's fun if you are, if you are like a new journaler, but you can find somebody who ha who's like very experienced and then you guys can like share supplies. Yeah. Because I think that can be a lot of fun if you can spend just like an hour or two um, just like chilling and just like planning, journaling, collaging, whatever. Um, that's like a really fun way to get into the yeah. hobby. Mm -hmm. Especially if you can like swap washi tape samples or like stickers yeah. and yeah. stuff. Yes. That's like one of the best ways to get excited about journaling. Yes. I mean, someone gives you like, it's a little gift, you know? Yes, and you just give me an idea that we should do that at the store. That would be so cute to do that at the store, right? like yeah. a little swap. Okay, mm -hmm. it was great to see Natasha. I love seeing you at the store always. Thank you for coming. Um, and then someone else that stopped by who asked about you actually, Ashley, is somebody who we've mentioned before, Jara. Um, Jara, who's visiting us from the Philippines, she was so sweet and she brought us, she brought us this adorable postcard from the Philippines with all these stickers decorated and she said that she wanted to um, come and test her Tagalog. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But she missed you. That's I would so want to see that also. Yeah, I would want to see it too because um, I would probably fail that yeah. test very hard. Uh, yeah, I am no expert in Tagalog. I know like random words and phrases, but I cannot speak it fluently. Like if you, if Jared, if you come back, I will be happy to take your test. Just know you might be disappointed. That's so funny. <laughs> She's very nice though. She's not going to be like a harsh teacher or anything. <laughs> yeah, and I just love that she's like here from the Philippines for yeah. like uh, six months, but she was so prepared and she brought like postcards. That's so nice, and I love the colors of this I postcard know. too. And there's so like cute. she said these are like the, this is the national fruit mm -hmm. of the Philippines and the national flower of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. and she just include this little 
little sticker for us. That's so nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was Sarah. great to see her. I hope you can catch me next time. Yes. Yes. Please come when Ashley is in the store next time so I can witness this test. <laughs> Conversational pop quiz. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I'll okay. Study. I'll yes. Study. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm imagining you like staying up and like being on Duolingo late at night, like yeah. <laughs> preparing for this test. You know they don't have it on Duolingo. I've really? tried. Yeah, oh. they don't have to go on Duolingo or else I would have done it. Oh my gosh, we should Especially ask them. for you, Jara. <laughs> we can berate the Duolingo owl yeah. to add. Yeah. To add it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet they would answer. They're so funny. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's about it for this episode of Catching Up. Thank you for watching, everyone. And um, I hope you are looking forward to all of these events that we have coming up. Hope you're well. And um, hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Thank you.